So I grew up in Walton on Thames, uh, in near Surrey, and uh, I first got into paddling. My first ever experience was in the Scouts. I literally pulled the name out of a hat. One lot went to abseiling, the other lot went to try kayaking. And uh, I did one session on a reservoir and really enjoyed it. Um, and my mum took me down to a club when I was 10 years old, down to Elmbridge Canoe Club in Weybridge, and never looked back from there really. Did a week of trying canoeing. Um, and it happened to be that Elmbridge was one of the best clubs in the country at the time, um, in 1987. And then in 88, I saw a load of athletes heading off to the Olympic Games, um, competing at Seoul. And they come back and they're wearing Olympic kit, they're talking about the Olympics. And you're in that environment of these top athletes athletes as an athlete first starting out in my sport. I, I totally feel that it was being in a club where there's a, an elite group of athletes that are training there every day uh, and being in that environment and, and sort of feeding off that and, and learning from them um, and yeah, the experience that they share from their racing trips and the Olympic Games and the way they train and the way they conduct themselves. I think as a young impressionable kid just starting in the sport it does have a big impact and it's a, a really positive impact for a lot of the athletes that train there at the time. So in 1994, uh, around that sort of time, there was a group of four athletes at the uh, Elmbridge Canoe Club that competed at the World Champs in 93 as juniors in a K4. And one of them was turning senior that year, so there's a spot coming up in that boat. Um, there's a few of us that could have taken that spot, but the other guys in the boat were quite keen I filled it, and I was quite keen I filled it too. So I started training a bit harder, and, uh, and we all kind of met up with Eric. He, he wanted to start coaching us a bit then, um, and the rest is history, really. He took us on from being juniors to you know, making finals, getting the best results juniors have ever got in 94 and 95 World Championships. Uh, Paul Darby Dow and myself won the Junior Worlds in 95 in the K2 500, which is the first time GB's ever done that in the junior race. And, uh, and we just carried on kind of pioneering in terms of our results from there. So it's nearly 18 years now that Eric's coached me. He's got the best results out of all the athletes he's coached. Um, we've all got European medals, we've all got World Cup medals, and, and yeah, I've got a heap of World Championship medals as well. So it's been quite a relationship and it's developed over the years. The type of training we do, the volume of the training we do has just yeah, increased exponentially over that time. Um, but all through experience, yeah, a bit of trial and error and a sort of a, a good coach who listens and learns and talks to lots of people and has lots of ideas. Um, and I certainly wouldn't be where I am now if I hadn't uh, had that fortuitous meeting with Eric back in 94. I first tried to compete in Atlanta Olympics in 96. I was only 18, 19 then, and it was a long shot. Um, none of us had qualified, and it was all a bit of a you know, wild card entries for everybody, and who would go. And Unfortunately, I didn't get to go then. I wouldn't have got great results there, um, but it would have been nice to have at least competed at an Olympics and got one out of the way in experience-wise. Um, but Sydney Olympics was my first games. Uh, I'd come fifth at the World Championships the year before, which qualified the place, and continued to perform well and I was absolutely inspired by the Olympic Games. It was an amazing, amazing experience. Being, staying in the Olympic Village, being amongst all the top athletes from different sports at the Olympic Games, all the crowds, I'd never competed in front of such huge crowds at the Games before. And I felt I really kind of lifted my game and raised my game and managed to, to just scrape in at the last, you know, last sort of 100 metres of the race to, to scrape a bronze medal. Um, which is the first ever Olympic medal in our sport um, for sprint kayaking. So at the time I didn't realise you know, how big a deal that was um, and what a turning point it was. But throughout our career we'd, we'd gone in with a fairly naive view that just because we weren't winning medals before, why shouldn't we win medals now? Um, which is why I think as juniors we started to perform really well and we're winning medals. And we were just driven. A small group of athletes, a very positive, driven coach and all you can expect from that is success I think and, and we had sort of high expectations of ourselves and confidence in ourselves and our ability and the way we were training. From then the Olympic sort of journey has been quite uh, an interesting one. I graduated as a doctor after, after Sydney Olympics a couple of years later. I was trying to work part-time, trying to train as a full-time athlete going into Athens Games. I qualified a place but I was never really I was always in the top half of the, of the A finals at the World Championships, but never really challenging for medals again. And I finished probably where I should have finished, in a, in a fifth place in Athens, um, which was disappointing after the bronze in Sydney, but um, 
I went back to work for 18 months after that, but with a real fire in my belly that I still had unfinished business. I still had more I had to give in my sport, but I knew that I had to change something to do that. And to do that was to become a full-time athlete again. So after a short break after Athens, I became a full-time athlete, and that was uh, yeah the best thing I could have done. I've started winning medals again at World Championships, winning medals at all the World Cup races. In the last two years before, in the build-up to Beijing, I was first or second every World Cup, European and World Championships in every event I did, culminating in Olympic champion in, in uh, 2008, which I'm very, very happy with. <laughs> But it's been a it's been a quite a different journey. I did 18 months of work again, like I did after Athens. Um, got back into sport, started to race really well. Got a silver medal at the World Championships first year back, which is mirror image of what I did in the build-up to Beijing. Um, and training was going really well until November in 2010, where I tore my right pec tendon. So I tore this muscle right off the bone, and uh, had to have surgery and was in a sling for three months. Missed a whole you know, winter almost of really good quality training. Still went out to South Africa like the day after surgery as I planned to, um, but just quite a different uh, winter of training. Lots of running up table mountain, lots of cable work on the left hand side, leg work, just trying to do whatever I could to keep fit so that when I came back, I was coming back strong. And that was a, it was a tough year coming back in 2011. Uh, I tried to do probably too much. I tried to get involved in the K4, I was trying to do my K1, I was trying to just do everything trying to get trying to help basically qualify as many people as possible for the games in hindsight I probably should have been selfish and just focused on the K1 um, ultimately I lost the K1 selection but yeah maybe that was a blessing in disguise it meant, it, it meant I could race K2 with Ben Farrell I've not raced K2 at a senior worlds for a very very long time and I really really enjoyed it I had a great time racing with him we, you know we did our best had a reasonable result um, and it probably yeah, really fired me up for a good winter training again and to try and get that Olympic place um, this year. I wouldn't have wanted it this way, but it was the way it was. And we had a yeah, big selection battle and, and thankfully now on the right side of that selection battle and I can start really, really focusing on training hard and enjoy training hard again, because I know that what I'm training for is to try and defend my Olympic title. Over the last, what, 10 years, I've been relatively unchallenged in the 1,000 meter in the K1 in the UK. Um, so selection's never been difficult. It's always been difficult competing against the other guys in the rest of the world. And that's, whilst that's a nice thing, it's not great for our sport. We need athletes to come through. We need you know, new blood in the sport, especially over 1,000 meters to start you know, taking out the reins and, and start to be getting the results and winning medals. So it's good that we have other athletes who are starting to challenge now. Um, we had a fair selection process, I believe. Um, I'm not just saying that because I won the selection. I do think it was a fair process. We had the best opportunity. We knew what we were going to have to do a long, long time in advance and, and prepare for that. Time will tell whether it yeah, affects the performance by the time it comes to London, having to sort of peak a little bit sooner. Um, but. Yeah, in the meantime, we were trying not to peak too much. We wanted to peak enough to win selection, but not so much that we're yeah, not going to go fast in, in August. Um, so I think, yeah, it's part of sport. Every athlete has to go through selection. I'm always interested in all things. Um, it's a difficult... Career-wise, you know, my father's an engineer and I was always interested in the engineering side of things. Um, in medicine, there's so many different specialities you go into, into and I'm always thinking, oh, I'd love to be an orthopedic surgeon, I'd love to be an yeah, a and &E doctor, I'd love to be a heart surgeon, I'd love to be this. And, uh, and also, off the, yeah, outside of the professional side of things, I'm interested in all sorts of things as well. I was always interested in you know, building radio control model aircraft as a kid and that slowly developed into sort of building kit cars and renovating cars a bit. I don't really have the time or the money to do it, um, but it was things that I yeah, enjoy, DIY and renovation, and anything using my hands and keeping active, I, I love doing. So any bathrooms need doing, I'm there. <laughs> I really want to learn to fly. I've done quite a few 
I've flown quite a lot in, in light aircraft and had a couple of lessons in helicopters and in, in, in light aircraft, but it's uh, lack of funds is the problem about learning to fly. Um, and I think that, yeah, combined with my sort of a and &E and trauma stuff, when you see the helicopter emergency medical services, that's something I'd love to do. Um, yeah, flying into yeah, scenes of major trauma and just getting stuck in and, and using skills that you've learned to, to help people, I think that would be one thing I'd love to do, but very little I wouldn't like to do. <laughs> Um, I think with the amount of paddling and training I do these days, a perfect day is probably a day off training. <laughs> um, when you can wake up, you know, I've got a daughter now, who's 16 months old, it's, I love it when I, you know, most mornings I'm out before she's even awake, so in a day off, uh, waking up and you know, getting her up and out of bed and giving her breakfast and taking her for a walk and playing and all that sort of stuff, spending time with my family and out and about, yeah, just relaxing really, because every day so full on, uh, in, in the training world, the perfect day for me is a day when you can just take your foot off the gas, just chill out a bit, you know, go out for a drive somewhere nice, go to the Bushy Park or Richmond Park, see some wildlife, and just kick back and have a coffee and <laughs> a nice time in some in some good weather. Um, preferably, if I can get near the sea, that's even better. Again, you know, I love being near water. That's one day I'd love to own a house you know, on the side of a river. Um, because even though we spend every day on the water, you still feel a real affinity with it and you feel almost at home and you're calmest when you're near water.